Dionysian. Dionysian. Dionysiac. Well, a lot of the best stories of ancient Rome and Greece come when people are drinking at the Dionysian festivals. And they tell the stories then of the, the crazy dude who, uh, what, what does he do? He cheats on his wife or something like that. He kills his wife's sister or something like that, but he doesn't completely kill her and she ends up surviving. And then the sister comes back and is like, hey, let's get revenge on him and let's bake your son and put him in a pie for your husband to eat. You know, that's just crazy stuff like that. Who else could think about that but the Dionysian spirit? This is uh, not Apollonian. This is mixed, you know, part, part of you're part of me and I'm part of you. And that's what happens when people kind of drink. So Dionysus was the Greek god of wine and pleasure. And they, the biggest festival every year was in his honor. This presentation will not be about the Dionysiac, which is more about the like, religious sort of festival part of it and the traditional, but this presentation will be about like what it is to be Dionysian. To say simply, Dionysian people just kind of let loose and Apollonian people are really rigid. Uh, you may have heard of like an A-type person who's that Apollonian, right? and then a B-type person who's like, yeah, you know, it's cool, we'll figure it out. So you can see this when you travel. Do you just sort of hope that things go well? You need to get a basic plan to hope that things go well. That would be a Dionysian person. Maybe we, we may want to have Dionysian friends. I mean, Apollonian friends are good too. But our, we want our accountant to be Apollonian. We may want our chef to be Dionysian though. You know, so th th these are qualities that are in all of us. And the idea is that some of us have more of one than the other. So let's uh, see, Nietzsche was a crazy Dionysian. You know, he had mental problems and he, uh, he probably had a rough death, to be honest. And he doubted himself. He alternatively liked and disliked books like the one that I'm taking material from for this lecture called The Birth of Tragedy. But you know what he could do? He could appreciate music better than anybody. You could imagine him riding on a trumpet wave of Wagner's symphonies. And you could imagine him sinking down into the depths of the Wagnerian tubas and cellos. And he would explore the limits of human feeling. This is what the Dionysian gave to Nietzsche. And he said that it's in all of us, whether we admit it or not. And we need to be willing to accept that. So. You don't have to drink to access this. Uh, Nietzsche did a lot of things, but I, if I understand it correctly, he wasn't uh, drunk. Let me, you know, give a cheers in case I'm wrong about that. But then there's Wittgenstein. Now, Wittgenstein was like a crazy Apollonian. And he wrote a book with a Latin name that was a joke on some other guy's Latin name book that like a tenth of a tenth of a percent of, of anybody could ever understand this, okay? But Wittgenstein was like, I'm going to figure everything out. I'm going fi to figure it out. Okay? And he writes in this really mathematical style, okay? He's like, paragraphs, God, that's so Dionysian and messy. I mean, come on. Uh, how does one know to which degree paragraph five relates to paragraph Four, and is that more or less than the relation to paragraph six? Uh, one must know these things. So he wrote his philosophy like a set of stereo instructions. Step one, this is a thing. Step 1.1, the thing is a concept. Step 1.2, the concept exists. Step 1.2.3.4. Wittgenstein had an unhappy life. Depression, war, exile from his home country. And when he died, he said, tell everyone that I had a good life because I tried. I tried. At least I did that. And that's an Apollonian solution.
So these are the questions. Are you going to worry about every little detail? Or are you going to kind of let it go? Are you Apollonian or are you Dionysian? Nietzsche said we need to be more Dionysian because he actually wanted to connect with other people. It's, it's not just about being irresponsible in your freedom. It's about giving up some of yourself. It's, it's admitting that you are not a 100% a clearly defined individual, but that you have a connection and you owe a, a, a responsibility to admit to the connection to those around you. And you know, alcohol helps with this, with some people. So I, I live in Japan. Most of the day, Japanese people are very Apollonian. Uh, hard working, strict, uh, straightforward. But you give them uh, an end of the year party, they will have a crazy all you can drink for two hours or three hours uh, drink fest, and most of the rules of the game are off. And that's their Dionysian moment where they can release the stress of everyday life. So, what does it mean to have a Dionysian spirit? It doesn't mean that you get drunk all the time or that you even depend on alcohol to connect with people. It just means that you realize there's something inside of you that wishes to connect with others and push down the importance of your rigid self. Thank you.